Greetings from Cybertron. This is Soundjack here with Alyssa. Yo. And today we are talking about Jurassic Park, the first movie in the long running film franchise of Jurassic movies. I, I would say Jurassic Park movies, but we have recently moved to Jurassic World as the main title. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, it is 25 years old. We just missed the 25th anniversary of this movie as it came out June 11th, 1993. And if you haven't seen the movie, you should go see the movie, but it is still a very cool movie and very notable for its prolific use of CGI to make very realistic dinosaurs to the scientific knowledge that was present at the time. Also, it was based off of, of a book. Yes, the yes. novel of the same name by Michael Crichton. Yes. Crichton, I don't remember how to pronounce it, but that guy. Yes. But while we are predominantly going to be talking about the movie uh, directed by Steven Spielberg and produced by Kathleen Kennedy and Ger Gerald R. Mullen, we are going to be touching upon the novel as well because Alyssa has actually read the book. I have. So... So I, I know a little bit about the source material. Yes. But before we get really into it, um, how did we first hear about this film? Alyssa, how did you first hear about Jurassic Park? Uh, I mean, probably in like it came out in 1993, so way before I was born. Um, and I guess I just kind of saw it on TV over through reruns, you know. I feel like it's very similar to older movies that I wasn't aware of. I don't know what the first time I ever saw a park was, but I do know it's probably on TV because they show it a lot mm. um, there. Um, so, you know, you kind of you know it through normal cultural osmosis. Uh, I will say I read the novel. I got my hands on a copy of the novel back in high school because my high school was doing a big discard of books that were being checked out and were also in bad state affairs. And I actually got a dress dark book that was like a copy of the book that was published um, in conjunction to the original movie. Um, at least that like publication of it. There have been like publications of Jurassic Park then. Um, and I read Jurassic Park back then. So how so those are my two my two ways I knew about it. Awesome. Uh, as for me I am going to guess something along the lines of what happened for you for the movie because I don't remember the first time I watched it. I definitely remember having watched it all the way through at some point. I just don't know where. Mm -hmm. Or when, or why, or how. Exactly. But it did happen. And um, as much as I like to have like an interesting story of like, oh, this was the time I first learned I love dinosaurs. I mean, I got nothing for you, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. But it is still a very interesting movie. So, I mean, th this would be our... Point. Well, actually, no, this would be a point of do we recommend this movie uh, before we get into it? Alyssa, do you recommend this movie? I definitely would. I think fun time. Um, as far as faithfulness to the book goes, I mean, like, it, it is faithful to it in some respects, but in other respects, the movie takes something away from the book. Um, most notably, the tone is very different, but um, overall, Say that this movie is a good watch. You know, the actors are all fun. Dinosaurs look unbelievable as far as realism goes. Um, still some top notch effects, even, you know, 25 years later. Um, uh, I'd also say that, you know, the, I don't know, it's just like a good, a good Steven Spielberg time. Yep. And I would as well. It is very much for the same reasons. Dinosaur, Steven Spielberg, good actors, good effects. What more could you ask for? This movie has aged very well. Mm -hmm. I would say. Did you want to give a summary? Too? 
Oh, yeah. Uh, do you want to give the summary? Sure. So, for those of you who either A, haven't watched Jurassic Park, or B, haven't watched it in a while, which is probably more likely, um, Jurassic Park is, is a story of a... The main character is a guy named Alan Grant, who is a uh, paleontologist, and he is invited along with several other paleontologists and other scientists and business people to check out this newfangled park thing maneuver on an island called Jurassic Park. It's run by a guy named, uh, what's his name, Joseph, uh, no. Uh, John Hammond. The, John Hammond, oh my goodness, there. It was an H. I didn't remember the actual the name that well. So, yeah, basically, um, he is John Hammond's Cricket Park, and he used uh, the, some science stuff to basically reconstruct it, create dinosaurs that people can, like, look and see and all that stuff. So it's basically like a, a glorified zoo, maybe in the vein of something like the animal kingdom from Disney. Um and uh, basically, they go to see the park, but things go wrong because another guy. Why do I keep forgetting all these characters' names? I, I just saw the movie. <laughs> the dude who steals the embryo, Dennis Nedry. He's like the he's like the programmer. So uh, Dennis Nedry, he's played by Wayne Knight. Um, basically, you know, shuts down the park's like dirty system in order to steal some ember to a competitor of Jurassic Park and doing so basically lets loose the dinosaurs and things all go to hell in a handbasket um, and the main bulk of the story is the characters trying to survive the dinosaurs and all that good stuff mm-hmm. so yep. did I miss anything super important? No I don't think so Awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the summary. And I'd say this is the point where we're getting into spoilers, but it's a 25 year old movie, so it's your fault if you are spo- letting yourself get spoiled at this point. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that sounds harsh, but I mean, I think it's accurate. No, I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, but still, if you haven't seen this movie, I would recommend going to see it. I know that there are people out there who haven't seen it. Oh. Yeah. Yes. So, so uh, what do you want to start with? Let's start. Uh, let's start talking about the fun part, the science. I want to say science. Okay. All right, Alyssa, you are the main scientist, admittedly. So I'm going to let you start this. Con- I, I want to break this conversation up, um, but I, I mean, I'm going to start it by saying points you had made to me. Um, but the biggest thing about this movie is that when it came out in 1993, the dinosaur science was like straight on accurate to everything. Yes, to a point. I mean, there there were some things that were uh, inaccurate. Uh, like I think the Velociraptors are technically not. I mean, they're they're Velociraptors, but like they they have like a more specific name. I also think that the the dinosaur that spits the goo at um at Dennis Nedry isn't accurate either, and more of an amalgamation of different ideas from dinosaurs. But like for the most part, like there it was, it is very accurate to how dinosaurs were conceptualized back in the early nineties. Yes, and even the uh, idea. Like, so the dinosaurs in the movie are created through, um, like, a mosquito with dinosaur DNA in it, trapped and trapped in amber, and they basically use the DNA to reconstruct dinosaurs. Um, and, and obviously they use frog and amphibian DNA as well to, like, fill in the gaps and such. Um, yeah, so... That that was that that was how they explained how the uh, dinosaurs were a thing. Um, but then um, it has been since proven that that would be impossible because DNA does not uh, stay fossilized for so long; it decays. Yes. I don't remember how long it stays viable 
but it, it, it doesn't last for very long. It's probably only a couple thousand years, if like maybe one million years at the most. That's what I was trying to say. I think there. DNA has a half life of a thousand years, so then you only get half the yeah. DNA, and then half and half and half and half until yeah. it's completely useless. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's assuming fossilized. I mean, if you if you really preserve remains, like you know, they've found woolly mammoths from the ice that are fresh enough that the DNA still is good, so they could technically you know revive them if they wanted to, but. Again, that's, those are like bit specimens that are very well preserved. Mm-hmm. And in the case of dinosaur bones and insects that are like in encased in amber, the exoskeleton would be what would stay, but the guts would kind of, you know, yeah. disintegrate. So yeah. in that case, the DNA would still disintegrate over time. Yeah. So, but that was believed since- to be possible when the film itself came out, correct? Yeah, theoretic, theoretic, theoretically, yeah. yeah. It was believed to be possible, but then that was then proven false. Yeah. I actually think pretty close to after the movie was released, but yeah. regardless, I mean, that goes to show again that this movie was pretty scientifically accurate to, again, how dinosaurs were thought of in the 90s. Yeah. But so. um, bringing up the discussion of science first, uh, is twofold because one, it was very accurate to the time, mm-hmm. but in recent, but since that film has come out, we have learned more and different things about dinosaurs and how they work and how they appear and whatnot. That mm-hmm. to, to, in several regards, they're relatively they, some some of the depictions are relatively inaccurate, um, but yeah. People can't change their, but people still think what they think is correct because Jurassic Park was such a huge cultural phenomenon that it's now, while they did implant the correct scientific notions at the time, it is now kind of hard to override what Jurassic Park presented with the more accurate science of today. Yeah. Which is, which to me is, is part of the reason why Jurassic World series really frustrates me, because like they could update it. I mean, these are real animals that literally existed millions of years ago. They're not like movie monsters, you know. Yeah. And again, like even you know, you know, Steven Spielberg hired a paleontologist to look into it, and also, I mean, just to get an idea of how accurate. The dinosaurs were um, the theory that uh, dinosaurs were the ancestors of birds was was something uh, that this film actually helped to realize. Like, uh, there's a story about how you know when they were uh, coming up with the motion capture and the 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 computer model for the T Rex. One of the paleontologists on the scene, when he was observing how the T-Rex would walk through like all the computer models, he realized, oh my goodness, this T-Rex walks a lot like a chicken. <laughs> and that's when they were like, hmm. And so, and nowadays, yeah, uh, dinosaurs being the, like, the closest living relatives to birds, um, or not the closest living, oh my goodness, dinosaurs don't exist. I meant like, that birds being the closest living relatives of dinosaurs is what I meant. Yes. Um, that is something, I mean, that was something that I think was tossed around at the time, but but this movie helped to solidify that theory. And again, it's kind of sad that the recent movies don't want to update, you know, Jurassic World to sort of reflect our current understanding of yeah. dinosaurs. The big thing, the big, big thing is that dinosaurs, uh, from at least at least raptors, uh, there's still some debate as to how many other dinosaurs were, but raptors at the very least had probably proto feathers, um, uh, and proto feathers are like scales, like sort of stick up scales. So they aren't feathers in the in the bird conception of, feathers, but they're they're essentially feathers. And it's been known for a while that like later dinosaurs have had feathers, but recently. Um, there's been discovered many other 
late Cretaceous to dinosaurs also had feathers, such as Tyrannosaurus rex. I think Triceratops, but that's I'm not 100 percent on that. I'm actually gonna look that up um, right now. But my point is that lots of things have have happened and have like uh, evolved over time when it comes to like how we think of. Mm-hmm. Of them. Um, I'm gonna see. Do they have feathers, or am I wrong? I might be wrong. I I wasn't sure about uh, them. Yeah, and also I think I mean I don't know. So the other thing that frustrates me, science-wise, about Jurassic Park is that a lot of dinosaur media sort of portrays dinosaurs as having all lived at the same time. Yeah. That isn't necessarily true. Dinosaurs have lived for at least the species have lived or as a as a as an order or as a family of creatures have lived over a hundred million years in, in life in span, you know. Like the the Triassic period, there are different kinds of dinosaurs in the Cretaceous period. And like for example, Triceratops lived lived in the late Cretaceous. I think around the same time as Tyrannosaur. I think Tyrannosaur might have been, a, or was it a Jurassic? Tyrannosaurus is also late Cretaceous, but something like is the Hadasaurus late Cretaceous too, or is it older than that? Yeah, uh, something like the Hadasaurus is more uh, Tithonian period, which is the late Jurassic period, which is like way older than this Cretaceous period. I believe the Cretaceous period is closer to present day. Mm -hmm. I want to say, I don't exactly remember, but uh, so Apatosauruses wouldn't actually have existed alongside Tyrannosaurus or Triceratops. Mm -hmm. They're they're many different species. I mean, that's like a minor complaint, you know? Uh, I mean, the big, I mean, yeah, it is a minor complaint because, like, you're having all the dinosaurs in one place, of course. Um, yeah, I that mean, can't like, happen. You know, the biggest park, it, it makes sense to have, like, oh, here are all these different dinosaurs. And I'm sure they would explain, oh, this is, like, from the late Jurassic period, this is from the yeah. late Cretaceous period, or whatever. Yeah. But pop- I guess he, it has it sort of influenced people with his mindset, like, all of them kind of live at the same time. But yeah. It especially doesn't help with ju- the name of the park being Jurassic Park. Yeah. Making people think, oh, these were all from the Jurassic period or something, if they don't know any better, I guess. Um, yeah. But yeah, that doesn't necessarily help. Um, but uh, a lot of good is coming out of this movie and a lot of bad is coming out of this movie in terms of the science. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, but, um, unless you have any other scientific notes to note, uh, Alyssa? Uh, not that I can think of. At least at the moment. Excuse me, at least at the moment. Maybe I might have a moment of brilliance in yeah. some other time. Then, let's say, <laughs> let's get to talking about the, 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 the people who played the film. Uh, play the, act, the characters in the film. And... I just want to start off because he was the one one of the two people you specifically called out in the um, in the summary. Uh, mm-hmm. the character of Dennis Nedry, played by Wayne Knight, or as I like to call him, um, Bruce Stark. Nice. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, I'm just going to start saying it. Uh, every time uh, my dad, Jurassic Park's on, or I mentioned Jurassic Park to my dad. My dad say, I hate this character. I, just, I hate this character. Um, <laughs> and, I mean, he's not supposed to be likable. I understand yeah. he's annoying and, like, his personality kind of clashes with the rest of the tone of the film to an extent. Mm-hmm. Because in a very minor way, I see him as kind of like a Deadpool to an extent. Because like he's the one that's just like, hey, I don't care. I'm going to play by my own rules. Because at the beginning of the film, when he's being the Secret Service guy, he's, like, he's not doing like the secret code thing or whatever. The secret the super spy thing is like, hey, 
Hey, look, it's this guy. It's this guy. See, no one cares. So I, I kind of, yeah, I, I never minded uh, Nedry. I think he, he, his character makes sense given everything, you know, kind of how nervous he is. And like Wayne Knight kind of plays that kind of character. So, you know, when you see him, you kind of know what you're going to expect. And I, I, yeah, like you're kind of not supposed to like him that much. You get the, you get the idea that he gets kind of neglected in his job and he wants, he wants those fat sacks, so yep. he's willing to, you know, adopt some embryos in order to make, in order to have competition or something. Um, and I guess if he does feel annoying, the fact that he die, the way he dies probably makes it better. But yeah. <laughs> actually, yeah, I don't know. I, I, never, I never really minded him as a character. You, 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 you said he's a nervous character, though. I mean, like. Kind of, yeah. He, eh. he, has, he stutters a lot. He, eh. he seems very uncomfortable. No. In life. The only time he feels like that is when he goes to steal the embryos. Yeah. At the beginning, true. at the beginning when we first see him, and then while he's in the the science room, he's he's basically cocky. Yeah, he is very cocky. He's, That's a good point. Like, he only gets he, nervous he, when he's going to, to do the robbery. Mm -hmm. Because he doesn't know how to cover his own butt in that regard, so... Right. Um, and then, like, he get, he freaks out because he's, he's on this island in the storm. He's trying to get his money, and then he's free, and he goes the wrong way. So he's just more so freaking yep. out rather than outright nervous. Um, but I wouldn't mm -hmm. describe him as that, as nervous. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. Um, he, he, he is very cocky, though. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're moving on to his, uh, basically partner in the computer aspect, uh, Ray Arnold, a.k.a. Samuel L. Jackson. Yep. He's in this uh, movie. <laughs> yeah, you know whenever we see this whenever i see this movie i always forget samuel jackson it's like i guess for whatever reason i never see samuel jackson in this role yeah i don't know why he just he just kind of you know sometimes like i see samuel jackson in a movie and i'm like oh it's samuel jackson hi yeah. i think the only other time is like nick fury when he plays fury then i'm like oh it's samuel jackson yeah but well, or, or that I'm like, oh, it's Nick Fury, it's Samuel Jackson, you know what I mean? But with this role, well, I I don't know, like, for some reason, I just forget that he's in this until I see it. I'm like, oh, that's right. Maybe that just means he's a good actor in this movie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's not playing, like, an exceptional, except, like, a really, like, exceptional, outstanding character in this film. He's just playing a computer tech. Yeah. And the and the most crass his language gets is, hold on to your butts. Yeah, that's fair. He doesn't. He doesn't curse up a storm. No. Um, and I, I do think, I do think his character is probably the more the most reasonable character amongst the staff at uh, yeah. Jurassic Park. He seems he he has that air of I know what I'm doing, but you but you sort of know that he 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 has that air for a reason. He's not cocky in the way that no. Nedry is. He's like, I know what I'm doing because I actually get about what I do. Yep. Um. So that's so yeah. I do like uh, Arnold. I'm sad he dies, but yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's gotta be how it is. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Well, let's move on to more of the main cast. I'd say now. Um, sure. Let's talk about the doctors. Uh, let's go start with Doctor Grand and Doctor Sadler. Sure. So. Um, I guess it's kind of interesting because I've seen uh, Lena Dern, who plays Sadler in different movies, mm -hmm. more than just Jurassic Park, but I think I've always associated Grant's actor, whose name escapes me, Sam with, with Jurassic Park. Even though I know he's been in the movies, I just never seen them, no? Yeah. I don't know, have you, have you ever seen a movie that he's been in other than Jurassic Park? 
I've seen The Hunt for Red October. He was in that. Oh, yeah, he is in that, isn't it? Isn't he? I don't know who he was, and I, uh... Oh, are you just reading his filmography? Yeah. I mean, I'm okay. looking at oh, it. No. I definitely have seen the movie. I just do not remember him at all. Oh, I see. Also, Harrison Maybe Ford was in that, and I don't remember Harrison Ford being in there. Hmm. I think it was in there. I thought that's what I saw. Um... Hmm. Yeah. Um, I oh, oh, this that... was the first in a series. He wasn't actually in this film. Okay. okay. Harrison Ford. Sorry, we're on a topic of a completely different film that we may talk about at a later date in time. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, um, yeah, so... Uh, yeah. Great. Yeah, I think, I think both of them do a pretty good job. Um in their roles, you know. Um, oh, wait, that's not what I wanted. Oh, still looking at. Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, I think Sam Sam Neil does a good job as Alan Grant. You know, he has that sort of serious air about him. Um, Doctor Set. I think Laura Dern is. As, Sadler is great. You know, she has that sort of no nonsense feel to her. Um, definitely knows her stuff. Um, the scene with her examining Triceratops poop kind of shows how like serious and like willing she is to work. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. I I don't know. I think they're both pretty good characters. Yes. And I think it's also kind of nice how they're they're so they sort of hint at. The fact that Grant and Sadler are kind of interested in each other, but like they don't really, like I never really saw them as much of a couple, which I honestly didn't mind that. I'm fine with that. I mean, I really saw them as a couple, uh, especially I mean, since at the I beginning mean, like, of the film they're talking about kids, about yeah, having kids they, together. They are a couple, but like I, I don't know. For me, but it doesn't it like it doesn't were... like get in the way of the film, is what you're saying yeah like it's not it's not an overblown romance kind of thing it's mm-hmm. just oh they just you know it's a very side thing that isn't really brought up yeah I mean, the fact that they, that they talk about kids is, is fine yeah but i mean like i said the fact that they're a couple is really a big thing or even that much of a, it's like it's like not even worth mentioning in some cases mm-hmm. at least as far as the the bigger picture goes yeah. Though the kids thing is important because um, for most of the film, Dr. Grant at the start professes he does not like kids and for a good chunk of the movie he has to take care of Tim Murphy and Lex Murphy who are doc- mm-hmm. who are John Hammond's uh, grandchildren who are here at the island yes. when everything yep. goes south. Um, yep. So how do you think of the kids? The kids are fine. Um, I think it's a kid at child go they they do their parts well. Mm-hmm. Um, you you know they're they're kind of annoying at the start, but I think they're supposed to be yeah. You know, a little little you know, but as the as the movie goes, they're they're fine. They you feel so you want them to get out alive, you know. Yeah. Um, they they get nervous and scared when they should be. Uh, the scene with them being chased by the Velociraptors is a really good scene, mm-hmm. and I like that scene a lot. Um, yeah. yeah, they they're uh, they're they're good. They're, they're fine. They're, they're characters. <laughs> I don't. I I say that I don't really think of them strong characters all that much. Yeah. At least in comparison, to someone to like Grant or Sadler, you know. Yes. Or or John Hammond, but I think they're fine for what they are. Yes. Definitely agree. Um, though probably two of the biggest problems we have with this film do unfortunately revolve around these two kids and danger. I mean, it also includes uh, yeah. Dr. Grant in both instances, but um, yeah. let's go chronologically in discussing those because the first one is with the jeep and the tyrannosaurus knocking it into the tyrannosaurus pit uh yeah so the tyrannosaurus when it walked out 
its turf was level with the um, track, basically, with the road that those jeeps were driving on. When mm -hmm. Tyrannosaurus Rex was knocking the car into its pen, suddenly there is a massive d d difference in height. Um, yeah. To the point that a car is able to fall on a tree, and to the point that the Jeep is able to fall into the tree and still be a massive amount of height above the ground. I wouldn't dare to guess how far that is, but... Um, yeah. That's a big continuity error. <laughs> that is a very big continuity error. Like, not even, like, something that you can ignore, you know? No. It's not like, it's not like an, oh, there's food, the water in the glass, you just yeah. love kind of yeah. like, continuity error. It's like, a hey, holy crap, how do people not see that kind of continuity error yeah. that's almost distracting? Yeah. Like, to be fair, it would probably make sense if, like, um... If they had redesigned the park and like it was like more of a monorail thing and then it was higher above the ground and like you could look into the pit but the T Rex couldn't climb out of it. Yeah. That could that would be reasonable, but that's exact absolutely not what happens here because we definitely know the T Rex well the T Rex couldn't have climbed out of that. It to break down the fence anyway, but we also see the goat level with the Jeeps. Yeah. So. Like it's 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 like the the creators wanted to have, like, you know, the T-Rex come break out of the cage right in front of everyone and, and, you know, attack the kids. But they also wanted to have this epic scene where, like, they were, like, on the wall with the ropes, you know. They wanted yeah. to have both. They wanted to do both of them at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I mean, the easy solution, if they really wanted to do both, was, like, have the cliff on the opposite side from the pen. Yeah, I can do that. Just have a massive pit right over there. Um, the other big problem we have is when uh, Dr. Grant, Dr. Sadler, and the two kids are in the are trying to get power to the island back, mm -hmm. or like the systems up and running. Well, the, the the power is back, but the systems are still shut down. So they're trying to get the systems yeah. back online. Um, Dr. Grant and Dr. Sadler are holding the door off from the last um, Velociraptor. Velociraptor. Mm -hmm. um, the gun fell and is out of both their reach. And then Lex, who noted she was a hacker before, is trying to work on and on uh, turning the systems on again. Um, mm -hmm. But Tim is there. He And all he is doing is hanging over the shoulder of Lex. Um, neither of the adults tell him to come get the gun even nope. though he's capable and yes his hands are singed because he got electrocuted from a 10,000 volt electric fence which he probably mm -hmm. shouldn't survived in the first place but um or at the very least not be as or at the very least not be as mobile as he is he would probably have to be in a hospital bed recovering for a couple days if not weeks yeah um but he is shown to be immobile. He is shown capable of grasping things. So why couldn't he go get the gun? Why did no one think to shout, hey, kid, grab the gun, even if the kid didn't think of it? Like, I'm sure the kid probably didn't think of it. But Yeah, like, my problem with that scene is just that it's not that the kid was, it's not that they weren't able to look. Because, like, you could do the whole thing where maybe and for some reason couldn't grab the gun because his hands were burned or something. Mm -hmm. You know, you can you can make a reason why he can't grab the gun, but the fact that they just don't acknowledge that he's there and capable, or at least that we know of, is capable. It just it sucks the tension out of that scene, in my opinion. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, it's just I guess for me that scene is really distracting because it you could have fixed it. Like either a have them ask him get the gun you know and just have him not be able to for some reason mm. or just write it so the gun ends up outside on the dinosaur side of the door yep so they just don't they just, so, so it's just not an option yes you know it, then then that even makes it scarier because their only method to defend yourself is not there yeah so i just thought of a funny and terrible thing Mm -hmm. So the Velociraptors learn to open doors, right? 
Yep. So it's to stop the Velociraptor if the gun was left on the other side of the door from learning how to use a gun. Uh, <laughs> Opposable thumbs. That's the answer. Yes, that is the answer. Opposable thumbs. Also, I'd say that guns are a bit more complicated than the door. I mean, you just boom, pow, boom, pow. I mean, safeties, man. Yeah. I mean, I presume they'd have the safety off. You gotta hold it and then shoot. Like, it's a more complicated thing than just pressing a lever and then pushing. I think it's a bit more complicated, especially if you're not a human. Eh, eh, I'm sure they would have figured it out if they had the chance. We <laughs> will agree to disagree to that one. I mean, I'm just trying, yeah, to, that, I'm just trying to support chaos that, theory here, man. You don't know. You don't know until it happens. Uh, speaking of chaos yeah. theory, let's move on to Dr. Ian Malcolm, a.k.a. Jeff Goldblum. A.k.a. the best part of this movie. Yep. Yep. Uh, like, what does he do? Jeff, but, like, we still love him anyway? Yeah. I, I, I'd I argue that this, this movie is what made Jeff Goldblum a household name as far as actors go. Mm-hmm. Like he, this movie is what solidified Jeff Goldblum, like as an as as an actor who does all his good work. You know? Yes. Yeah, because I, I want to say this was his first major role. I don't really know what he, what what he was doing before that point. Uh, he was in Invasion of the Body Snatchers in seventy eight. Um, he came to the oh, wider okay. attention of audiences in David Cronenberg's The Fly, 1986, which earned him a Saturn Award for Best Actor. Oh, he, oh so The Fly was before Jurassic Park? Okay. Yes. So, yeah, I guess The Fly was probably technically his like, first big, big, first big break. Yeah. But I would say that Jurassic Park is what really launched him into the spotlight. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? Completely fair. I don't know how popular the fly was, how notable he was after that. Maybe, um, maybe I, maybe he was a household name when the fly came out. But. Yeah. I mean, there are other films here between that and the, between the fly and um, Jurassic Park, including the fly too. Um, but yeah. I don't but necessarily like, know I'm, how I'm important like, those movies are. Yeah. I'm thinking like major movies. Like, mm-hmm. the, people really know about yeah um yeah i uh yeah i think uh i will say uh i think ian malcolm in my opinion as a character is probably the one that was least changed from the book for the most part i mean grant's been like any you can read the book, so any comments that I make about the book are could tend to be uh, so just, you know, keep that in mind. But you know, Malcolm is sort of the character who like understands sort of the he's kind of some ways the moral center of the movie. Not really like the moral center is in like the person who wants to do the right thing, but more the person who's kind of like warning everyone what's going to happen you know? he's the like he's, he's, he's the, he's he's the, the true guy. neutral in an alignment chart say what say what again he's the true neutral in an alignment chart yeah and he he's the one who recognizes that there's something dangerous that could potentially happen mm-hmm. i mean granted i don't think grant and sattler were immediately taken by the park when they were first you know, introduced to it, but then when they first the heard about it, like, I don't think they were into it when they first saw it. They were over the moon, and then they were realizing, oh wait, raptors. Yeah, like I think once they found out that they cloned, like, or made really dangerous dinosaurs, they were like, hmm. but I think Malcolm for the whole from pretty much for pretty much go like this ain't the same good idea. Yeah, you know. um so in that case, way, I feel like Malcolm is sort of like the embodiment of like what you're supposed to take away from this film, mm-hmm. kind of. At least in the books, that's kind of how it is. Yeah. But. Um, life persists. Yeah. You can't control life. It cannot be contained. 
like, yeah, finds that a way. kind of thing, and and also sort of serving. And I think we'll talk more about this when if if we if we set some time for me to sort of ramble a little about uh, the differences between the book and the movie. But you know, there's also this idea of like people sort of jumping into big advances, advancing science, but n- not really thinking about the consequences until it's too late. Yeah. Um, especially when science is, this kind of scientific uh, breakthrough is immediately put up for profit. Yeah. That's that's sort of the overwhelming, overarching criticism yeah. that Jurassic Park yeah. kind of pushes. Before you said the profit part, I could have given a perfect current day example of the scientist who made the AI the psychopath by look, making a look at posts on Reddit. Because yeah. that's definitely an instance of like, you can, but ask yourself why, <laughs> or should you? Oh my god! They're not making that into a profit, but I mean, I mean, yeah. You know, but, I mean, yeah, I think Jurassic Park's cautionary tale thing kind of applies there too, but. Yeah. Anyway, I think we wanted to still talk about. I think the last character we want to talk about is John Hammond. Yes, yes. Who is acted by Richard Attenborough? Yeah. Uh, and I think perfect casting. Mm-hmm. Although I will say, James Hammond is the John Hammond. I mean, is probably the most altered character in the from mm-hmm. the from book to from book to screenplay. Mm-hmm. Um, in the book, John Hammond is much more cynical guy. Um, he definitely is sort of for money more of a character than uh, John Hammond. Here's like John Hammond in this in this version is very much more of like a whimsical showman who kind of wants to do it for the kid, you know. Mm-hmm. He says he has sort of like a Willy Wonka kind, not not Willy Wonka ish, because Willy Wonka is a little more devious, <laughs> but. You know, this sort of idea that he's he wants to create something for the world to see. Yeah, he, he's a dreamer, you know. Mm-hmm. That kind of personality. Is that fair? Yeah. You know, and he, he like he, he seems to think of his park as a glorification of art, kind of. Yes. Or of wonder, you know. Yeah. Whimsical. He has a sort of a whimsical personality. Whereas in the books, he's I wouldn't say he's like Niacally evil, but like at the same time, he's not whimsical. He he's definitely more. He he's he's got like more like he he definitely has like money bags in his eyes, you know. Mm-hmm. Like he 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 is a little bit more of a sinister character in the book, but um, again, I might be wrong. Uh, been a while since I've read the. Jurassic Park. I, 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 after I read the book, I came away from it, you know, feeling that James Hammond was a bit more of a... John. Oh, John. Gosh. John Hammond was definitely more of a, like, like, he, he's a billionaire. You know? Like, he's, he's kind of doing this, you know, he, he doesn't seem, he doesn't have sort of the heart that this John Hammond does. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yes. Um, I actually just described for myself because I went went to the book just in case it, he was actually called James Hammond in the book for whatever reason, but no. But no, no, he's John Hammond. I was just he was always John. Um, but yeah, um, I do very much like him in the movie. Yeah, he's a good character. He's, 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 a, he's a good a nice contrast character. to the obvious that is presented in his lawyer in the lawyer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which I think is Molden, Robert Molden, played by mm-hmm. Bob Peck. Um, because the lawyer is there and being like, "We can make as being like, I don't, I don't know about this park. The investors don't know about this park. He's these real dinosaurs, and it's like we're going to make a fortune. Yeah, we can charge a thousand, two thousand dollars a ticket. Yeah, and 
being a jerk like that. Well, John Hammond's like genuinely believes in like showing the world a fun time. Yep. Even though that fun time is incredibly dangerous, even with the best of safety precautions. Yeah, and I, I, I kind of also feel like, you know, the even though Hammond's character kind of changed, I think it's still in, sort of teaching the same lesson in that, like, unbridled determination to have a thing rise against all odds can not always be the best decision either. Yeah. Um, very true and since we were talking about the differences between the movie and book Alyssa since you wanted to said you wanted to ramble on a little bit between the differences go ahead sure um, so as I said before the thing about Jurassic Park the big difference the biggest difference um, is that the, is the tone between the two um the movie is much more of an action, summer action blockbuster, you know, like good effects, has sort of that Spielbergian whimsy in it. You know, when you see, when you first see the dinosaurs, you're like, whoa, you know, like it's, it's still kid friendly ish enough that a kid can watch it. Um, and there are a lot of intense action scenes, but there, there, it's not like, scary i guess you know like i mean i mean there, i think probably the scariest part is when sadler is trying to reboot and you know she meets yeah. uh you know you know arnold's pan comes out and stuff and uh you know she's being chased with a lot of that's probably the scariest part of the movie but like the Jurassic Park, the novel, is very much more of a horror book. Like, it's definitely, it's, there's a lot more gruesome, violent sort of horror elements in the book compared to the movie. Mm -hmm. You know, like, they describe the dinosaurs, like, ripping people up. And you get picked off. A lot more people die in the book than in the movie. Uh, actually, Hammond ends up dying. Oh. Uh, to the to the T Rex. Oh no no no! I'm sorry. He doesn't die to T Rex. He dies to uh, a a a pack of like basically like tiny little dinosaurs. It like okay. Um. And. And um, there's definitely there's definitely a more creepy aspect to it, mm -hmm. um, and it definitely like I, I don't know, it doesn't it's definitely like if I were to have imagined the movie version of this before if I had read the book before I watched the movie I would say I would have thought more of something more along the lines of maybe Alien maybe not as dark creepy as Alien but more in that vein, like more in the vein of the, the dinosaurs are more like monsters and mm -hmm. are more scary and unpredictable than the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park in which, I mean, they're still animals, but like they're not as scary and purposefully like creepy and dangerous feeling. They're more, I don't know, like just the tone's very different. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like, would you say that Jurassic Park is a scary movie? I don't think it is. No. Like, there's not a horror tone to this movie. It's no. a little bit more friendly than that. Like, the, the scene with Salary you were talking about, definitely horror, definitely terrifying, but I mean, very, relatively minor. And I mean, the de we, every other death that we see is all pretty much off screen. We don't get yeah. a whole lot of blood going on. I mean, like, we know the goats that destroy are maimed viciously, but we don't see it. Oh, we yeah. just hear it. Yeah. Um, and I think no, the no. most, the only time we really, really see blood is when the T-Rex is, te is tearing into the Velociraptor. Because I yeah. definitely remember like, in that final scene there being a fair bit of blood on the neck of the T-Rex and then a lot of blood kind of gushing out. Um, yeah. The last raptor. Um, I mean, and the, comparatively to other scenes, there wasn't that much blood. That one just had seemed to have the most. But yeah, again, and all CGI, all these. It's not uh, 
the, the human getting drawn and quartered and then drawn and quartered again. Um, but yeah, yeah. But just just like give you an idea of how more how much violent and descriptive Jurassic Park the book is. I don't remember whose death scene it is. I want to say it's Hammond's, but it might be wrong. Uh, but they actually describe him uh, holding his inner guts because they've been ripped out. Oh. Yeah, like just like they they do like like I, like I'm telling you, the Jurassic Park the novel is a lot more gruesome. <laughs> yeah. Than the novel, the novel is a little bit friendly. Uh, and I also feel like the novel is a little bit more critical of like the kind of theme park attraction dinosaur thing that's there. Um, no. I feel like the, I mean the movie still has that sort of overall theme to it, but I think the book is way more potent on no. it, especially in regards to chasing this kind of thing for the for the point of money mm-hmm. or like immediately wanting to make, you know, try and like sell this kind of product without really thinking about the consequences mm-hmm. or who would be affected. Yes. I think it's also kind of interesting how the book opens um, with uh, the, this little girl. So like there, there's like these, like they open before you even get, I mean, you do get kind of introduced to, you learn about InGen and you learn about like InGen, which is the a fictional genetics company that Hammond runs mm-hmm. who creates the dinosaurs. You, you this, the, the first scene of the book opens up with a family on vacation in Costa Rica and uh, essentially this little girl gets attacked by a dinosaur. You don't know it's a dinosaur yet. I mean, you do, but like, the, the people don't know it's a dinosaur. Mm-hmm. It's a strange lizard looking animal thing that attacks this girl. Yeah. And that's kind of, you see, it opens up and that, that the dinosaurs have escaped Jurassic Park yeah. and are now attacking people on, in Costa Rica. And then that's when, and then eventually you, um, you, you, uh, and that's when, um, you know, Grant and uh, Sadler come into the picture is when they're contacted to identify the lizards thing. Mm-hmm. And that's when Hammond sort of, like, whisks them away Yeah. to go to Jurassic Park. We're like, hey, Jurassic Park, and, like, make it so that my dad don't put on me because they're scared. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, like, like I said, in conclusion... Uh, the, the big, big difference is that Jurassic Park A is way more critical of, you know, the whole progress in the progress and, you know, no, pro, no, no consequences really being considered until it's too late, mm-hmm. as well as um, uh, there, it's a much more gruesome, violent, and horror-type novel than... Um, than the movie is. Mm-hmm. It's a little more. It's a little darker. It's, it's, it's darker. Yeah. That's what I'll say. I don't. I don't think it's like, on like I don't think. I mean, granted, I have no idea like, people's people's levels in terms of what kind of darkness they like to read. But I will say that if you're expecting a darkness level on par with the movie, that's not what you'll get with the book. Mm-hmm. But that's all I'll say because, like I said before, it's been a while since I read it. Okay. I don't want to say anything like incorrect. Yeah. And I do like free to like correct me on it. Mm. But yeah, that is very interesting. That's very mm-hmm. cool. Um, that is surprisingly interesting, especially since before even the, the, the book was published that Universal Studios bought the rights to Jurassic Park. The, the the novel to make a movie out of, yeah. So, I mean, well, actually, it's not that surprising, I guess, because if it's the, the, the action one would sell better than the horror one, probably. Mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. Um, unless they wanted to wrap the Jurassic Park into their dark universe. <laughs> Please no. 
I mean, that universe is dead after one movie already, so... Uh, <laughs> Alright, sir. But anyway, enough bashing uh, other non-successful um, multiverse film franchises. Um, Jurassic mm -hmm. Park. Uh, very good movie. Very fun movie. Yep. Very interesting yep. movie in terms of how it it relates with science. Uh, yeah, it is. And a couple of notable problems, but overall an enjoyable mm -hmm. film. Yeah. Oh, wait. One thing I wanted to make sure you mentioned. John Williams is back again. He's yes. awesome. Oh, my God. Yes. The Jurassic Park theme is definitely up there in terms of some of my favorite John Williams. I personally think Star Wars is better. Yeah. As far as like themes go, but yeah, it's for me. Jurassic Park is definitely up there. I think it definitely captures the big whimsical feel that Spielberg was going for for this movie. Yeah. Um. So good on you, John Williams, as always. Absolutely. Legendary composer. Yes. So any, I I love I love this that that theme. Mm -hmm. So. Also, uh, the CGI in this movie, as I said, was not only groundbreaking for the time, but still holds up to this day. Yes. Which is so impressive. Like, there are many, many instances of CGI from the early to late 90s, even late 90s, 2000s, where that CGI just, like, is vomit-inducing. Mm -hmm. But this movie is still great and uh, wonderful. And, I, man, do I wish that CGI and some other movies that have, you know, more of a budget than this one did would be able to have more realistic looking, you know, stuff. Mm -hmm. Is this a jab at Transformers? Uh, not necessarily, <laughs> but it can be. I'm just curious. Anyway, uh. I needed to I needed to get the Transformers mentioned in there somewhere because we hadn't done it oh, in this yeah. episode yet. Uh, um, the Dinobots uh, don't make a key in this movie, by the way. No, no. no. Mostly because uh, Grimlock is inaccurate. <laughs> yes, in various ways, in different parts. I mean, in, in in all the ways, he he still walks with his tail on the ground. Well, the original one. Yes, Since then, they've fun. corrected that to him being Jurassic Park oriented, though the one in the movie features horns. Nope, that wasn't on. Nope. Yep, nope. But I mean, Pteranodons didn't have two heads either, so. <laughs> no. Anyway, I, I, think, I think this discussion is on its course, though it was a good one. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, definitely recommend, definitely go watch it if you haven't, and definitely go watch it again, just because it's 25 years, man. Um, Alyssa, where can people mm -hmm. find you at? So, you can find me on Twitter, at the Rational Dev. Uh, feel free to tweet me, tweet me. Um, I'm, I'm still, uh, I'm not, since I'm not the biggest social media user, I'm more of a lurker on social media. I don't post all that much, but... You know, if you at me at something, I'll probably see it, and we can have a chat if you want. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah. That's yeah. That's that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. For me. What about you? Yeah, Michael. As for me, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at soundjack four twenty six. Um, I also do have a Patreon, so if you would like to support me, you can uh, check the link in the description below. Everything is linked in the description below. Um, also, please like and share this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to. And that is all we have to say. So, this is Soundjack and Alyssa signing off. <laughs>